Hello Doomtown fans, Willing Dunn here, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about movement in Doomtown Reloaded. Movement is one of the trickiest aspects of the game, but it's also one of the most interesting once you get it mastered. While the rules to movement in Doomtown are quite simple, there's lots of emergent interactions that are difficult to understand as a new player. The goal of this video is to not only explain the rules of movement, but also point out certain interactions between the rules and card effects. You'll notice that most of the rules of movement concern whether or not a dude needs to boot to get somewhere. So we're going to start by talking about why it matters for him to be booted when he gets there. First of all, booted dudes cannot call out other dudes. This is going to limit your ability to cause shootouts to occur. Let's say we want to take control of an opponent's deed, but in order to do so, we have to scare off the guy that's already there. If we arrive at our opponent's deed booted, we're not going to be able to call that guy out, and he's surely not going to start a shootout himself since it's such a bad fight. In order to force the issue, we're going to have to get there unbooted. Next is that booted dudes cannot refuse the callouts of other dudes. This means that your booted dude is going to have to fight at least one round of combat against a dude that calls him out. In this example, it's pretty evident that poor Irving wouldn't survive the one round of combat unless he drew exceptionally well. You need to take special care if you're going to boot your vulnerable dudes into locations. But keep in mind that your opponent can't call dudes out at your home unless they have some sort of card effect or ability that lets them do so. Booted dudes also cannot move or join posses outside of their own location. This rule usually matters the most for your big stud dudes. You don't want to have them booted when you need them to protect people elsewhere. It can also be very important for determining control of deeds, especially at the end of the turn. Imagine if you have all of your dudes booted and your opponent plays a new dude from their hand. They might be able to move this guy to a location and take control of one of your deeds at the last minute, and there's nothing you could really do about it since none of your guys can move. Booted dudes also cannot lead jobs, and they can't receive items from other dudes. They also can't use abilities that say, boot, to do something. Now that we've covered some of the implications of being booted, let's look at the actual rules of movement. The primary rule to movement in Doomtown is that whenever you move, your guy moves anywhere you want, but he has to boot to do so. As long as your dude is unbooted, he'll be able to move anywhere on the board that turn. Of course, he's going to get there booted, and there's a lot of reasons that we just went through why we might want to have him unbooted. Fortunately, Doomtown has two exceptions to this boot to move rule that make for some really interesting interactions. A quick mental shortcut is that the only dudes who may be eligible for this special movement are dudes who start in either the town square or your own home. If your dude is starting in any other location, he's going to have to boot to move unless you have some type of card effect. The first exception to movement is that whenever you move from town square to an in-town location other than your own home, you don't have to boot. This essentially means whenever you move from the town square to an in-town deed or another player's home, it doesn't cause you to boot. Take note that you can't move from the town square to your own home without booting. You can also move from your home to the town square without having to boot. If we combine these two exceptions, you see that a dude can move from our own home to the town square and then from the town square to an in-town deed, all in one turn without booting. Of course, this takes a couple actions, so our opponent is going to get to go between them. As a final defensive option, we're able to move a dude from our home to either the left or right adjacent deed without booting. Since this move only works on these two deeds, it's important to consider which deeds you place where as you lay them down. Be especially careful when you place your two control point deeds. As a general rule, you don't want to put these in a position that's going to be difficult for you to defend later. Also keep in mind that out of town deeds are not placed in the row with the other deeds, they're instead placed off to the side in their own area. 
Before starting to talk about interactions and cards, let's take a moment to look at out-of-town deeds further. The biggest property of out-of-town deeds is that they are not adjacent to any other location. This matters most when forming posses for shootouts. Remember that you can only have guys that are in the location or in an adjacent location join a posse for a shootout. So if one of your dudes is by himself at an out-of-town deed, no one can come to save him, unless of course you have a horse that can help break this rule. Like with all card games of this sort, the really interesting aspects of breaking the rules come from the card effects, not the exceptions written into the rules. Rather than going through all of the cards individually, I'm going to talk about the two main categories that these cards come in. The first category is shootout effects that you can use to have guys join or move into posses. These are nice to put on your larger combative guys because then they can protect a variety of people all at once. Some of these effects are also actions, and these tend to be nasty surprises for your opponent since they don't know that that guy was going to be able to move across the board and suddenly join. The disadvantage of the shootout effects is that they can, well, only be played during shootouts. So if you're unable to engineer a shootout or your opponent doesn't cause one, you're not going to be able to use those effects like you would be with the noon abilities. Speaking of, the noon abilities are the second major category of movement cheaters. These are mainly found on spells, equipment, and deeds. They usually say something like, noon boot, move this dude to a location. The disadvantage of the noon abilities is that they can't be used during a shootout. So in other words, with the Mustang, you're going to have to anticipate where the shootout occurs and get your guy there ahead of time. Of course, if you put the Mustang on a guy that doesn't want to fight, it's going to make it a lot easier for him to run away as long as you see the shooter coming. While there's a lot more I could say about movement in Doomtown, I think this video is coming to a close. I hope that this has given you some ideas about how to use movement to your advantage and has clarified any sort of rule problems you are having. One of my favorite aspects of this game is the constantly changing variables when it comes to movement and positioning of your dudes. This has led many people to describe the game as chess-like, and I'm inclined to agree with them. And like with chess, there's no simple answer to how you should move your dudes around the board. I hope this video has at least provided some mental framework on how you should think about moving your dudes around the board. Well, that's going to do it for me today. Thanks for watching, and please click the subscribe and like button below. I'll see you next time for more Doomtown Reloaded content.